Um, hello! Thank you for clicking on my episode. Um, before I begin, my best friend in the whole world needs your help. Her name is Joey, and she wants to go visit her significant other, but is having trouble with the costs. So in the description below is a link to the PayPal, and you can donate! She's also offering some artwork as a thank you for those who donate, so be sure to go help her out. Hooray! <laughs> Greetings, one and all two universes! In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, maybe your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters. Yokai, the master of the microbots, and Syndrome, the zero-point powerhouse. Which of these two revenge-seeking supervillains would win in a fight to the death? This is Universes. Now before I begin, I'll confirm right now that there are no spoilers for The Incredibles 2 in this video. I will not confirm or deny Syndrome showing up in the sequel, and any mention of The Incredibles 2 in this episode will be very vague and unrelated to the plot. With that said, let's begin. Now it seems like Professor Robert Callahan had a pretty decent life at first. He's pretty smart, an instructor at one of the most advanced schools ever, and even had a daughter. The problem was that that last thing didn't exactly last very long. In an experiment for portal transportation gone wrong, Callahan's daughter was lost in the vast expanse of who knows where. As you can imagine, he wasn't happy. And once a genius young boy by the name of Hiro Hamada showed up at his school, he began plotting his revenge on the scientist responsible for the transportation experiment. You see, Hiro had impressed the whole school with a new invention, and Callahan saw it as an opportunity. He set the school on fire and faked his own death while using Hiro's invention to protect himself. With people now thinking he was dead, he was free to do as he pleased. He put on a mask, a robe, and became the brand new villain, Yokai. So this mysterious invention I keep referencing is called a microbot. Alone, they don't seem like much, but Hero created literal millions, and when they link up with each other, they can do just about anything you can think of. Yokai was the one who invented the technology behind the microbots, so by stealing them, he was able to reverse engineer and mass produce them for his own use. He also created a mask that held the ability to control them, all with his mind alone. He can use them for transportation as it can carry him around just about anywhere, and use it as a weapon. Since microbots are so small, clusters of them can squeeze into tight spaces and tear things apart. Or he can pile up a cluster so dense that they can do heavy damage with powerful hits. From the looks of it, Yokai has multiple millions of these things from what he can do and how long he had been mass producing them. He does have some weaknesses though. It seems the microbots can't take him into water. They can't reproduce, so if some get destroyed, then his ammo decreases. Then of course, his control over the microbots completely relies on the mask. Without it, they'll just fall to the ground, rendering Callahan completely useless. Yeah, unfortunately without the mask, he's pretty much an average human. It's a good thing the microbots can do what they can though, because it definitely is a challenge to get that thing off. It took six people with advanced technology to do so. The microbots can rip apart small buildings and pretty much reach that level alone with the sheer amount of them and how much ground they're able to cover. They're pretty durable too, able to survive an intense fire and explosion. The speed of these things are also impressive. They're able to help Yokai move about just as fast as a speeding car, and they can catch up to Baymax who can outfly missiles at over 500 miles per hour. Since microbots are controlled at the mind, Yokai's mind must be insanely powerful as he was able to keep track of five different fights at once. He can trap people, attack people, try to crush people, stretch people, and chase people all at the same time. With all this, it makes you wonder why he wasn't able to succeed with his plans. Anyways, let's take a look at his opponent. Let me go. I'll give you anything you want. I want my daughter back. Now who doesn't love superheroes? 
The answer is no one, and that includes Buddy Pine. This genius kid was such a big fan of superheroes, he invented his own tech and attempted to join his favorite hero, Mr. Incredible. He put on a mask, cape, and fancy rocket boots to become Incrediboy! However, Mr. Incredible wasn't too keen on the idea of having a sidekick, and Buddy took it a bit harshly. I mean, having your dreams crushed by your literal hero is never a good thing. Buddy gave up on his dream to invent a new one. He grew smarter, richer, and hid himself away on an island to continue his inventing, with the plot of killing off heroes to replace them with self-made ones by selling his tech. But of course, for his plan to succeed, he'd have to kill off every hero, including Mr. Incredible. So he becomes the fake hero Syndrome, in order to prove he can be better than Mr. Incredible ever was. As mentioned a moment ago, Syndrome created these super fancy rocket boots. They can fly extremely well and fast, and Syndrome even stated he had his own flight pattern with them. He may be evil, but at least he follows the rules of the sky. Rocket boots aren't his only invention though. Syndrome has tons of stuff stored in his shiny white gauntlets. There are super powered mini eye bombs that he can toss or throw at foes. They may look small, but the explosion it can cause is massive. He has a scanner that can fly around and detect various things such as life signals, temperature, and more. Then there's a remote to control a giant Omnidroid robot, which he will not be having because he has to build one specifically for the situation, which requires prep time. Not to mention, they have a potential of betraying him anyways. Besides, Syndrome has plenty on his own. We're not done yet. We can't forget his most important invention, his zero-point energy beam. He can either shoot it out as a dangerous projectile, or use it as one long beam to grab and trap foes. This beam freezes the victim entirely, keeping them unable to move even a single muscle. They can't even blink. It's definitely one powerful tool that can be a major threat when put to good use. Believe it or not, but zero-point energy is actually a real thing. It's basically the friction energy that keeps the speed of light at the speed of light. Energy at absolute zero. And this makes sense too, since energy itself does travel at light speed. And since characters who would later go on to have massively hypersonic speed feats are unable to react to Syndrome zero-point energy, it's safe to say that his attack speed is no different. This zero-point energy is powerful enough to blow holes in walls and ceilings, and it can restrain Mr. Incredible who scales to a couple building level feats that I can't go into, but trust me, they're there. And if you don't believe me, there are still his eye bombs which can cause underwater explosions so large they splash to the top of an at least 60-foot waterfall. This would be wall to small building levels of power at the very least. But remember, these were all done with Syndrome's inventions. Just like Yokai, without them he's a regular old human. So who's the better genius? Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. And with everyone super, <laughs> no one will be. What is up, everybody? Corn O'Keefe back yet again, bringing you a little prediction, a little quick prediction for the next universes. We got Professor Callahan from Big Hero 6 versus my boy Syndrome from probably my favorite animated movie of all times personally the incredibles and i'm so hyped to go see the incredibles too that aside going into this i was gonna say syndrome all the way but professor callahan actually is he's older he has more experience these guys are kind of like in a way feetless like not not necessarily all the way feetless they just don't really have a lot of like Gru and Mega Mind type of stuff. You know, these guys are on that level of intelligence, you could say, but like they just don't have a lot of like concrete, solid feet. So it's kind of like intelligence, gadgets, maybe reaction time. Because I would say Syndrome might, you could be able to argue Syndrome has really good reaction time. I mean, maybe even better than Callahan. Now, I haven't seen Big Hero 6 in a little while. And the times I did see it, it was mainly with, like, little cousins, and it was late. I didn't really get, like, a full grasp on it. I mean, obviously, I know Baymax, you know, Marvel Comics as well. But, like, as far as the movie, I just don't remember a lot. However, I know Callahan is probably older. He has more experience. He has, like, some tech that, that might be able to, I think, grow the size of buildings. So that could be problematic because, like, Syndrome has some pretty impressive like haxy gadgets like his like what he used on Mr. Incredible to just sling this guy around and that's another thing like he was caught monologuing and still was fast enough to react to Mr. Incredible who himself has subsonic reaction time 
via like tracking dash, you know, with his eyes. So you can imply Syndrome has subsonic to possibly the speed of sound reaction time with that because, like I said, he was basically caught off guard and still he was fast enough to react and stop that log or whatever from hitting him. And Mr. Incredible himself has the subsonic reaction time. So you could imply that. That's pretty good. And then he has that little bomb, a little bomb device he threw in the water that Mr. Incredible escaped. But, you know, that could be problematic. And he built the Omnidroid, but the thing is, this Omnidroid kind of is iffy because it kind of turned on him at one point and it kind of one-shot him. Like, that's another thing that kind of worries me because Syndrome's durability is kind of lackluster from what I, re you know, what I recall. And, like, I love the Syndrome, and I, I think there is... Um, some advantages on his side, but sadly, I feel like this might go to not really sadly, just like sadly in the sense that I am a more more of a fan of Syndrome. But that being said, I can understand why Doctor Professor Callahan should win. I mean, I know I haven't said that much about him, but everything I know about Syndrome and everything I've heard and remembered about Professor Callahan, it just seems like Syndrome might actually lose more often than not. I mean, let me know what you think down below. Um, like I said, dude, if he, if these, um, techs, this tech of Callahan's grows the size of buildings and Syndrome got one shot by his building size robot, then GG, but, and then the experience. So this is actually a, a pretty interesting fight, really close in my opinion, but dang it, I got to slightly edge out with Callahan in my own opinion. Let me know what you think down below. As always, have a blessed day. Peace. And the results are in. The winner is... Syndrome. Now the results of this fight could go either way, but in the end I just found more advantages for Syndrome. So let's see how he wins. Now physically they're both average humans pretty much, but Syndrome has shown to be just a little bit tougher. He's survived more abuse like smacking into a building at blinding speeds, and has physically dodged a surprise attack from Mr. Incredible, while the most Callahan has dealt with is a tackle from Hero. And when it comes to their invention, Syndrome is also in the lead. While Yokai can reach small building level with his microbots, that's merely due to how many there are and the area they can cover. He couldn't damage Baymax's armor even though a small building fragment was capable of totally shattering it. Meanwhile, Syndrome's eye bombs can do that much damage in an instant, and his zero point energy can restrain those who are even more powerful. Not to mention the zero point energy should reach speeds that match light, far greater than anything Yokai has ever even come close to reacting to. Now, Yokai could likely overwhelm Syndrome with just how many microbots there are, but he clearly needs his hands for the more precise movements, which the zero point energy takes care of. But Leo, why include feats and scaling from the Incredibles too? Syndrome must be in it, you stupid spoiler! Again, I will not confirm or deny Syndrome being in the sequel. There is a reason for the scaling. Remember, even though it took 14 years to come out, The Incredibles 2 starts off the exact same day the first one ends, so their stats there should apply to their state in the first movie. They wouldn't magically get stronger for the sequel in such a short amount of time. It has nothing to do if Syndrome is there or not. Another factor is Syndrome is way smarter. He grew up inventing all of his own stuff while Callahan had to steal the microbots, even when he was the one who invented the technology behind them. The fight really depends on who can get around each other's technology first, and with the speed, arsenal, and smarts advantage, Syndrome should take it. Yokai's mask is a much more obvious and easy to reach weak spot than Syndrome's gauntlets anyways. The winner is... Syndrome! No kicks! Get ready for the next battle!